Most people think they understand SQL until they completely bomb this question in their interviews. I've been asked this question in all of my data analytics interviews, even the ones where I was paid over six figures, all the way up to $153,000. Because it shows not just that you know how to write SQL, but you actually understand how data connects. If you don't connect tables the right way, now you're putting the wrong numbers in your dashboards, and now you're giving the wrong numbers to your boss, which is never good. So in this video, I'm not just gonna show you the definition of inner join and left join, because everyone's heard those before. I'm actually gonna show you examples of how both of them work and compare them. By the end, you're not just gonna understand the difference between an inner join and a left join, you're actually gonna remember the difference and get this question right in all of your interviews. All right, let's first break down what is a join. If you're not familiar with joins, joins are a way to connect multiple tables together in a database horizontally. In the real world, very rarely do you have all the data you need in one single table. Usually, you're having to connect to multiple tables and grab data points from different tables and somehow connect them together in one SQL query in one output. We do this by using joins. We're able to glue the tables together horizontally by matching up all the rows on a common key. It's kind of like getting a zipper and just zipping up the tables and connecting them. And what key you connect on depends on the tables you're working with. Hopefully the tables you're trying to connect have a common key. Sometimes they don't, and that's a completely different issue that you're gonna have to deal with. But you basically have to figure out which columns in each table connect to each other. Usually you're gonna be connecting on some sort of ID field, so maybe you have have an orders table with a customer ID and you can connect that to the customer ID in the customers table. Or maybe in the orders table, you have a product ID and you can connect that to the product ID in the products table. Or maybe you have a products table that has a manufacturer ID and you can connect to the manufacturer ID in the manufacturer table. So what IDs you connect on really depends on the data you're working with. And sometimes it's not always easy to figure out what the common key is. Sometimes you have to dig through your company's data documentation, you have to do some trial and error. And sometimes you just have to find the oldest engineer at the company who's been there the longest and they'll be able to tell you sometimes. But once you find those keys, you're able to join the tables together and it's gonna look at every single row and find the match in the other table. And that's gonna allow you to bring in data points from both tables into the same output. And by the way, if you want to build SQL projects that will actually get you hired, check out my free Big SQL Energy intro course. You'll build your first data analytics mini project in only 30 minutes, even if you're a complete newbie who's never coded before. But if you're more advanced, check out my intermediate SQL course to build a portfolio with two complete projects and you'll actually get job ready. The courses are in the description below. So let me show you the coding syntax. So first we're going to start out with select star from orders and just to show you my tables real quick. I have this database, Big SQL Energy. That's the name of all my SQL courses. And then BDE for Big Data Energy. That's the schema we're going to be working with today. So if we look at our tables, by the way, this is Snowflake, a data warehouse. It's my favorite environment to code SQL in. We have an orders table with a bunch of order information and a customers table. So just looking at these previews, we can see that the orders table has a customer ID. The order ID is the primary key of the the table and the customer ID is a foreign key of the table. And then if we go back and look at our customers table, we can see that it has an ID in it as well, which we're going to assume is the customer ID matching to the customer ID in the orders table. So why would we want to connect the customers in the orders table anyways? Well, if we look at the orders table, we can see that it does have customer ID, but we don't have a lot of extra data or information on the customer. So we can use the customer ID in the orders table and connect that to the customers table and in the customers table, we have a bunch of other data points like the phone number, email, gender, and all these other data points for our customers. So let's see if we can pull in the customer's phone number from the customers table next to the order ID in the orders table. So back to our query, we have select star from orders and I'm just gonna run this. Here's our orders table. And now we can join on the customers table and I'm actually gonna use aliases. So orders as ord, customers as cust. This is just a little nickname that I can now use to refer to my table and you can name it anything you want, but don't name it anything like super irrelevant or crazy. Try to make it make sense for the table name. And now that we've joined in the customers table, we have to specify how we want to connect both tables. What key do we want to join on? We have to have some key in each table that we're going to connect each row by. So we can start with the word on and then we're going to connect on the customer ID in the orders table and the customer ID in the 
customer's table. And that's just called ID in the customer's table, but we're gonna call it customer ID. And now that we've run this, we can see that over here, we have all of the orders table data all the way until this column. That's the last column in the orders table. And then if we keep scrolling all the way to the right, here starts the customer's table. So we basically took the orders table and the customer's table and just glued them together horizontally by matching up all the rows on customer ID. But I'm gonna show you something real quick. If we go to a new worksheet and say select star from customers and run that query, we can easily see that we have 10 different customers. We have IDs one through 10 in the customers table, 10 different customers. But if we go back to our joined query where we join the orders and customers table and we highlight the customer ID column, we only have seven different customers, IDs one through seven. So what happened to the other three customers and why are they not showing up in this output? The reason why is because we did an inner join here. An inner join only keeps the rows that have a match in both tables. So that means for a customer ID to show up in the output, it has to be in both the orders table and the customers table. If it doesn't have a match between both tables, it's excluded from the output. So how can we interpret this from a business perspective? So thinking about it in a business context, we can interpret that as customers being in the customers table, meaning you know, they have an account set up, they're a customer in our system, but they're not in the orders table. Hmm. So that means they don't have any orders. They haven't placed any orders, at least based on the requirements that we have in our query. So that means because we use an inner join, we only included the customers that have placed an order in our output and any customers that have not placed an order and are not in the orders table got booted out and excluded from our output. And by the way, if you're wondering why is this an inner join, if you see here where we just have join that is an implied inner join. So you can put the word inner in front of the word join and it's gonna give you the exact same result or you can just leave the word inner off and just use the word join. Either way, it's gonna be an inner join. And of course, going back to our original question, instead of star, we can put order ID and phone number in the select clause and that's gonna give us the data point from each table that we originally wanted. But only for the customers that have placed orders since it's an inner join. But but what if we also wanna include the customers that haven't placed an order? Even if they don't have an order, we still wanna pull in their phone number as well, just to have a complete list of all of our phone numbers. Well, I'm gonna to go to a new worksheet so we can start a new query, and we're gonna actually use a left join for this. So we're gonna start out with select star from, and in this case, we're gonna put the customers table first. In the inner join, it doesn't matter which table is first or on which side of the join, because an inner join is only gonna keep what's in both anyway, so order doesn't matter. With a left join, you need to have your left table on the left. A left join is always gonna keep what's in the left table regardless of whether or not it has a match in the right table. So the left table works as kind of an anchor. It's gonna keep everything in that table and then match up what it can. So there's a chance everything could be matched. There's a chance that nothing is matched. It just depends on what you're joining. And of course, if there aren't any matches, it's just gonna leave null values for the things in this table. We can do this in our query by saying left join instead of inner join or just join. So now we're gonna left join the orders table on the customers table. And again, we're gonna add aliases, cust and ord, and we're gonna join on the same IDs as before. Cust.id equals ord.customer ID. And I actually forgot to select my database and schema in this worksheet, so let me fix that real quick. Boom, okay. It's basically just telling SQL where to go look for the data. Now to make this more clear, I did a select star. We don't want all the columns in both tables. So let's go back to order ID and phone number and the select statement. And it's really hard to tell a difference, but if we scroll all the way down, we can see that we have three null non-existent order IDs and three different phone numbers that go with those. That's gonna be the three customers that haven't placed an order yet. And we can actually confirm that by pulling in the ID from the customer table. So now we have the customer ID from the customer table pulled in as well. Going back down to all of these with a null order ID, we can see that these are customer IDs 9, 8, and 10. And this is why it's so important to make sure that you're using the right join, because if you accidentally use an inner join when you should use a left join or vice versa, you can accidentally filter out a bunch of data 
or add in a bunch of nulls. And sometimes you do want to filter out data or nulls, but if you accidentally do it unintentionally, you can really mess things up, especially if you're counting things in SQL. So I literally cannot express how important it is to understand the differences between an inner join and a left join and when to use which. In summary, you want to use an inner join if you only want the rows that have matches in both tables. So if you're okay with filtering out the things that don't have a match in the other table, then you can use an inner join. Some business problems with an inner join are which customers are in the orders table and vice versa, which products are in the orders table and vice versa, which products are in the inventory table and vice versa, which manufacturers are in the products table and vice versa. You're keeping everything that overlaps between the tables you're inner joining on. And you should use a left join if you want to make sure that you keep everything in that first or left table and you don't want to lose anything from that table. And you have to be careful here because you might end up with a bunch of null values for the rows that don't have a match in in the right table, but sometimes that's okay. Some business questions you can answer with a left join are, which customers have placed orders and don't filter out the ones that haven't placed orders. Pull a list of all the products and all the orders if applicable for that product. So it really comes down to which part of the Venn diagram you actually want in your results. So now you really understand the difference between an inner join and a left join, and not just that, you actually know when to use which. But joins are still a small part of the whole picture of SQL. And and joins are only a small part of building a data analytics portfolio, which is what you're going to need to get hired as a data analyst. So if you want to learn more about building a data analytics portfolio with SQL, head on over to my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.